Hey guys, Pro1701, and today we're going to be reviewing part two of the Dalek Invasion of Earth, which is called The Daleks, not to be confused with the original Dalek story of the same name. Now, this is my first time watching the Dalek Invasion of Earth. It was actually <clears throat> sent to me by one of my subscribers uh, to my P.O. Box, because I do have a P.O. Box where people can send me fan mail, uh, and I really appreciate Adrian sending it to me. I'm enjoying my watch of it so far. If you saw my review for part one, you know I loved part one. Uh, part two does, it shifts focus from the more creepier atmospheric stuff going on in part one to really getting the story moving and uh, finding out more about the refugee camp, which is indeed a resistance. We do find out that it is a resistance and they are actively trying to fight the Daleks. And it seems like there's a couple of them in charge. There's the one in the wheelchair who has created a bomb he thinks will break the Dalek casing, but it hasn't been tested yet. And then there's the other one who, I don't know if this is true, but he looks a lot like, I wonder if he's played by the same actor, actually, the guy from Colony in Space, the one minor that's not a complete prick, the one with the mustache that actually helps him. They look like the same actor. I don't know if that's true. Not the, one in the, not the guy in the wheelchair, but the other guy, the one, the guy in the wheelchair converses with. They look like the same actor, though in this one he doesn't have the mustache. I don't know if that's true and maybe they just look similar, but I know Doctor Who likes to reuse actors. So that looks like him. I forget his name. The one that played the minor with the mustache in Colony. <clears throat> and I'm enjoying uh, their characters. I like them a lot in it. They seem very accepting of Barbara and Susan, which I like and are trying to help them out. I enjoy that. So I love it. watching all those scenes with Barbara and Susan uh, kind of adjusting to where the situation they're in right now. Um, learning more about the resistance. There seems to be a few a few of them there. That looks like they uh, actually had some nice extras in this episode. Finding out that the Robo Men really are more like robots. I think in part one, in my review for part one, I compared them to zombies because that was the first thing that popped in my head. But it does make more sense to compare them to robots. They're very excuse me. Um. Very emotionalist, um, just kind of walking around like this and doing what they're told. They're basically puppets. We find out that the Daleks put those helmets on them, basically take over their minds, use them as puppets to the point to where eventually the Robomen go insane and bash their heads into walls or throw themselves off buildings. Or as we saw at the very beginning of the story, one of them just jumped into the river. Um... So they're short-term uses before they just burn out. But there's they're always they're always rounding up more people to make more robo men out of. Uh, that's interesting. I really like Hartnell in this story. Man, William Hartnell is great in this. He is just boss in this. I like right at the beginning when he's facing down the Dalek that conversation right at the beginning when he's talking to the one Dalek. And he's not having any crap from the Dalek. I love that. He is not afraid of that Dalek at all. Well, I mean, I'm sure he is kind of afraid of it, but he's not showing it. He's not letting it bother him or control him. He's While the Dalek is most definitely in control of the situation, the Doctor is not giving up his control. He's not just bowing down to the Dalek. He's still trying to maintain control like the Doctor does. And that whole bit about... <laughs> Conquer the earth. You won't conquer the earth until every living thing has been destroyed on it. Or whatever it is he says. I love that whole scene. I forget all of the dialogue he says, but I was mesmerized by it while I was watching it. I absolutely loved it. I'm like, this is a great First Doctor moment. Hartnell is on the ball here. And then I like toward the end of the story when him and Ian and the other guy are trying to break out of the cell and the other guy is kind of Oh, it's hopeless. We can't do it. And I love the fact the first Doctor doesn't care for this guy much at all. He's like, well, oh, we're if it was up to you, the Daleks wouldn't be afraid of much of anything. Uh, and I love, I, I love how savage the first Doctor is here. Like when he actually does solve it, when the guy's like, you can't do that. It's impossible just for the first Doctor and Ian to solve it. And the first Doctor's like, hey, hold this and shut up. I just love the way he says that. Hold this and shut up. <laughs> I was like. Man, the first Doctor is savage! Savage! Oh, I absolutely um, love it. And he says something to him right after that, too. I can't remember 
what it is. I just had it in my head and it just went out. But after he tells him to shut up, he says something else. It's just, it's completely savage and insulting to him. And it's, you could tell the first doctor, this is one thing he definitely has in common with the 12th doctor. They don't suffer fools. They do not suffer stupid people. Capaldi most assuredly does not suffer stupid people. And Hartnell, the first doctor, does not suffer stupid people. Or he doesn't want to hear that kind of defeatist attitude. He's like, just go over there and sit down. I like that when he tells him, just go over there and sit down. <laughs> I love that. I was so there for that. There is so much of the first doctor in the 12th doctor, I think. There really is. It's interesting. Maybe that's why they, they get on pretty well. Uh, I mean, the 12th Doctor doesn't hold the first Doctor quite in awe like some of the other Doctors do, which is an issue I had him twice upon a time, actually. <laughs> but but they but they get on well. <clears throat> Takes them a little bit, but they get on well. Because <clears throat> they're a lot of light to me. So I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed how well the first Doctor and Ian get on now, considering how antagonistic they were towards each other at the beginning in the first three or four stories. Um, I love how they just really fit together here, almost like two pieces of a puzzle. They're getting along. They're working well together. They seem to really enjoy each other's company. You know, I really like when uh, Hartnell's talking to him. Did you have you, did you, in your school, did you study You know, three-dimensional whatever it was? And he's like, no, no, we just did the, the boiler person's thing. He's like, mm. <laughs> well, I'll just have to boil it down to something simple, won't I? <laughs> I love that. The, the first Doctor makes a funny. It makes me think of Master Splinter in the first Turtles movie. I made a funny. The first Doctor makes a joke. I like that. I'll just have to boil it down and keep it simple, won't I? <laughs> I love that. I love his little chuckle. I love the first Doctor's little chuckle. <laughs> I love that. I don't know why. That's To me, that's so much a part of the character. Uh, so it's really weird now, I think. If I see other people playing the first Doctor, that they don't do it because it's just it's inherent to his character. <laughs> his little that he does sometimes too. They're just so essential to the character to me. Uh, it's one of his little ticks, one of his little nuances. Like his body language, a lot of his body language he does. They're just little verbal cues and little ticks that I like that I'm just really adjusting to, and I really enjoy that in this story. Re Hartnell seems really just on fire in this episode. I don't know about the whole story, although from the clips I've seen, the whole story, he's just on it. But this episode especially, he's just on it. Um, the Dalek voices, <clears throat> I really didn't like at first, uh, just because, you know, I've heard other stories where they've gotten way better. But I did adjust to them rather quickly, and once I adjusted to them, they didn't bother me. Uh, I do like that they came up with a reason why they can run around on the ground now when they couldn't originally, the little disc on their back. I like the fact that they thought to put that on there and actually make that part of the narrative to explain why they can run around on the ground. And I like the fact the little bumpers on the bottom are way thicker. I noticed that the little bottom bumper is thick, 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 thick on these Daleks. If they make a figure of the Dalek invasion of Earth Dalek, it's very obvious to tell that it's from that story. Um, the finale's interesting. It looks like they're going to try to turn the Doctor into a Robo-Man. I love the fact they tested him for intelligence. That was clever. I like that. Now, I'm curious whether or not that's something that just gets interrupted because the attack's going on or it just won't work on the Doctor because he's not human. I'm curious to see how that resolves. And from the way they film the attack, I can't tell if those bombs are effective or not. You see the Daleks kind of, not necessarily in a panic, but calling an alert, 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 search, you know, look. Um, I really like that, but I, because of the way it's filmed, I can't actually tell whether the bombs are effective or not. And I, I wonder if they did that on purpose. It's something I have a feeling I won't know until I watch episode three whether I find out whether or not the bombs actually work on the Daleks the way they're supposed to. So I like that I kind of don't know from the way it's shot whether or not the Daleks are panicking because they do work or whether the Daleks are just not panicking but are on alert simply because they're being attacked. And, you know, Daleks being attacked, you can shoot a spitball at them. They're like, what? 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 Spitball? What? Especially these classic Who Daleks. Um... <clears throat> I'm curious to see how that resolves. I love the fact that Barbara was the one to come up with the idea of disguising themselves as Robo-Men. I really like Barbara. Uh, again, very strong character in general. I mean, she's a strong female character, but just in general, she's a strong character, well-written. And I love the fact that she's willing to speak up with this group that she doesn't really know that well. She's not shy. It's like, well, why don't we just put on one of these helmets and 
I like the fact she's the one that came on up with that idea, and the other guy's like, hey, that could work. So that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm really enjoying the story thus far, uh, getting more into the meat of it and meeting some of the other characters. Uh, looking forward to seeing where it goes next. So I'd like to know what you think of episode two of the invasion or the invasion of the Dalek, the Dalek invasion of Earth. So comment it down below and let me know. Other things to do, click the like button, click the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. We have crossed 700 subscribers recently. I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and now my goal is to hit 800, so hopefully we're on our way to that. I do have a P.O. box if there is anything you would like to send me, such as this story right here. It was a present from a uh, subscriber who sent it to my P.O. box. If there's any other Doctor Who stories you would like to send me or sci-fi, other sci-fi stories or just anything you want me to look at uh, in general, check out my P.O. box down in the description below. If you would rather support me on Patreon, I do have a link to my Patreon in the description below as well with several different tiers there from uh, my entry-level tier at $2.00 to my top level tier at $20 and several in between. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Stephen Crane and the Fifth Doctor, two of my top tier patrons. I really appreciate their support. And I also have a link to my Amazon wish list down in the description as well if there's anything on that you would like to send to me. Most importantly though, thank you for watching.